Well, thank you. And uh, there's a lot of interest in vaccine acceptance and hesitancy. And so the inspiration for uh, some of my interest was a journal review um, or a manuscript reviewer who said, you didn't define vaccine confidence. And I thought, well, I've never seen anybody define vaccine confidence in the previously published literature. Um, so I sort of embarked on, on looking at this in more depth. And so um, the things I'm going to talk about this morning are some of the highlights from, from that review, as well as um, a find, findings from a, a forthcoming study, which looks at vaccine confidence, but also looks at confidence in other contexts. And then we've also done some work um, related to confidence relative to the measles outbreak that took place in the United States, and that was published in Health Affairs back in January. There's a lot of interest in vaccine confidence. Um, two large entities, SAGE, uh, the Strategic Advisory Group of Experts, defined vaccine confidence as being an, one of the many factors that influences vaccine hesitancy. Um, more recently, the National Vaccine Advisory Committee it, in the United States defined vaccine confidence as referring to the trust that parents, healthcare providers have in the immunizations that are recommended, in the providers who administer those vaccines, and in the processes that lead to vaccine licensure and the recommended vaccine schedule. So those are probably the two most widely circulated definitions of vaccine confidence. And they're, and they're fairly similar. But if you look at the, the broader literature and you look at the articles and the research that's been published that uses those terms, vaccine confidence, what you find are a couple of things I think are, are very important. One, you find that vaccine confidence is often linked with vaccine hesitancy, but there is a difference between addressing hesitancy and overcoming vaccine hesitancy. And so, for instance, if you're talking about addressing parents' vaccine hesitancy, you're probably talking about building, establishing rapport um, through education, provider communications. If you're talking about overcoming hesitancy, then a whole different toolbox can come into play, including behavioral economics, incentives, things that don't necessarily change people's underlying beliefs, but it gets them to behave the way that you want them to behave. And so there is a distinction, I think, that that's important to be made between addressing hesitancy and overcoming hesitancy, particularly as we start looking at behavioral science and behavioral economics. Trust has been proposed as a key element of vaccine confidence. And as you saw in those two previous definitions, it's mostly about trust in those two definitions. Um, and it is an outcome that has been linked with high confidence. But I think it's also important to note that conceptual definitions of vaccine confidence actually vary quite a bit when you look more closely at the literature and how it's been used. And many definitions have actually never been operationalized or actually measured. For instance, um, we do a lot of focus group research. And when you listen to parents, particularly hesitant parents, talk about things like confidence and hesitancy, what you often see surfaced is they're referring to confidence in terms of, I have no reservations. I have no um, hesitation when it comes to complying or adopting with a health-related recommendations. And so we've heard these things in focus groups, such things as, I have no reservations about whether or not it's a good idea or desirable for me or my child uh, to get vaccinated. I'm completely convinced of the safety, the value, the need. Other definitions, definitions that are out there that haven't really been operationalized or measured include faith, the faith that um, one will benefit or no harm will follow as a result of vaccination, the strength of belief uh, regarding an expected outcome, that the vaccine will provide protection, absence of worry or concern. And then the other one that's actually um, quite relevant but rarely measured is this satisfaction with one's decision. How confident are you that you actually made the right decision? or that this is the correct decision, whether it's to vaccinate or to not vaccinate. So there are other definitions in, that are out there that, that need to be looked at and, and need to be considered in terms of our measurement. One of the things that we've done most recently, and this is a study that's going to be published in the next few months, is we've looked at um, how do vaccines stack up relative to other things that parents have to make decisions about, such as antibiotics for children, over-the-counter medicines for children, and vitamins for children? How confident are they in the safety, effectiveness, and value of those things? And so uh, we did that in 2014 with a survey of 1,000 U.S. parents of children five and under. It was a nationally representative sample. Um, and we looked at 
where do vaccines stand? And so two things I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to show you. One is that expanding the context shows that vaccines, at least in the United States, do fairly well relative to the other things that parents have to make decisions about when it comes to their children. And I'm also going to show you that parents' behavior, along with their direct and indirect vaccine-related experience, actually is associated with vaccine confidence ratings. So in the first case, where do vaccines stand relative to these other things? So we had a number of different measures of vaccine confidence, but they mostly centered around three key elements, safety, benefits, and effectiveness. And so we asked parents how confident they were in a scale of zero to 10 that the overall recommended childhood vaccination schedule is safe, that the overall schedule will protect their child from all diseases and illnesses, and that their child's health will benefit from getting all the recommended vaccines. And then we had slight variations of that referring to the individual vaccines. And so what you see here is that when it comes to vaccines, they're generally a seven on a scale of zero to 10 in terms of confidence. That compares pretty much to antibiotics, which is similar and a little bit higher than over-the-counter medicines. And then vitamins are sort of a mixed bag. Um, vitamins had the lowest rating when it came to confidence that their child's, that children's vitamins will successfully protect their children from illness or disease and the highest level of safety confidence. So vitamins are perceived as generally being very safe, perhaps not so much in terms of effectiveness. We also asked parents um, the standard question that many people ask, which is, where is your child with respect to the schedule? Are they up to date? Have they received some, none, or all the recommended vaccines to date? And you see that this is what we found. So it's pretty common. 4.6% uh, for none is, is higher than what you often see in the United States, but then this included parents of kids who were two months old, four months old, six months old, um, so it's easier for them to say none. We also asked whether parents had given or their kids had received things like vitamins, antibiotics, and over-the-counter medicines, and so you can see that similar ranges for vaccines. We asked them, um, have they ever delayed getting vaccines? And you find this. Um, and then if you look at other things, um, highest for vaccines, but some context for these other things. We also asked, have you ever decided to not have your child rec receive a recommended vaccination? Um, and again, for comparison's sake, you can see where vaccines stand relative to these other things. It's a little bit higher, but these other things do get refused. Um, and then we looked at what was the correlation between confidence ratings and their child's vaccination status to date. And you can see a pretty clear uh, association here. Parents who have been following the schedule have higher ratings when it comes to vaccine confidence across the board, whether it's safety, effectiveness, and value. Parents who have said that they have not given their children the recommend, and none of the recommended vaccines clearly had the lowest confidence ratings. And then those who said some were in between. We asked parents about reactions, both reactions that their child may have experienced to a vaccine, an antibiotic, an over-the-counter medicine, or to a vitamin. We asked them about reactions that they've heard of. And so what you see here is that when it comes to reactions that um, they have heard of, it's a little bit higher than reactions that they have actually experienced. And so more parents have heard about adverse events re relative to these things than who have actually experienced them. And that actually comes into play when it, with respect to confidence ratings. And so when you look at confidence ratings and those two things, the first column being, have any of your children had a bad reaction to a vaccine, to an antibiotic, to um, vitamins? What you see is this, which is that if their parent, if, if their child has had, has not had a reaction, they have the highest confidence ratings going forward. If their child had a reaction to a, a vaccine, uh, it does impede or lower their confidence ratings. But even if they're unsure of whether their child may have had a bad reaction, it lowers their confidence ratings. And so it's not necessarily knowing that your child has had a reaction, it's being unsure that your child or suspecting your child may have had a reaction that affects confidence ratings or is linked to confidence ratings. The other thing that the, the data showed us was that knowing of someone also had a pretty strong effect, particularly in the case of vaccines. Um, and it's likely that in many cases, knowing of someone was probably a more um, horrific or interesting story 
than what they've actually experienced. And the stories that circulate through the media or through social media are probably going to be more um, significant than what you probably experienced in real life as a parent. And then you see similar patterns for these other things. So again, we're finding that vaccines are not unlike um, over-the-counter medicines and antibiotics when it comes to what's happening in terms of confidence and confidence ratings, what, what affects those ratings. And so I think uh, it's helpful to expand the context to, to kind of get a sense of where vaccines lie relative to other things that parents have to make decisions about because vaccines are not um, happening in a vacuum. So thank you.